Hi everyone, I'm Nathan from theebookreader.com. For this video, I'm going to give you guys a comparison between the Kindle Paperwhite 2 here on the left and the Nook Glow Light here on the right. So, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the screen first. Uh, let me turn this light off so we can see the front lights a little better. Uh, both devices have the same 758 by 1024 resolution screen, but the Kindle, it has the latest screen tech from Inc. called Carta, uh, whereas the, the um, Nook, it's used in the uh, Pearl screens. Uh, right now, both the devices have the front light turned up. Uh, all the way, as you can see on the Nook, it's a little bit brighter. The front light's just a little bit brighter. It's also a little bit, a uh, little bit bluer in tone. Uh, let me go ahead and adjust the front light so you can uh, see some different uh, settings here. On the Kindle, we tap on the top and we bring up the light setting right here. So uh, let's go ahead and adjust it to half brightness on both of these, approximately. So uh, it's going to be hard to tell, obviously, with this lighting in this room. But um, I can't get all the light out, so I can't do totally dark. But as far as the front light goes, um, you can't really tell unless you have them on full brightness uh, just what they look like on these two devices in this particular lighting. But yeah, you can turn them all the way off. Let's go to turn them off and show you what they look like. Oops. Okay, the Kindles actually doesn't go all the way off. You can just turn it all the way down. It's still barely, barely lit. If you look down, you can still see the LEDs. As far as the contrast when they are both off, I mean, the Kindle and the, and the Nook are very comparable, but with the Carta screen, it's just a little bit lighter background. As you can see right here, my Kindle keeps doing full page refresh. Every once in a while it does this. I have full page refresh turned off right now. It's supposed to do partial refresh, but it still does full page refresh. I do not know why. As whereas the Nook, it never does full page refresh. It's always partial. Um, it only does full page when you're like viewing menus or like the home screen or something. As far as the Kindle, it usually does it every 12th page. I don't know what its deal is. I've always had problems with this particular unit doing this where it just keeps doing full page refresh. But I like full page refresh, so that's not an issue to me at all. So let's go ahead and turn these lights back up here. And let me show you a couple of other things here. But as far as the features go, I mean, the Nook doesn't really have any legs to stand on compared to the Kindle hardly. I mean, the Kindle just has so many more features. The Nook, it's a real basic e-reader. Uh, BNN just hasn't invested into the software. We've got, you know, we've got the usual text adjusting options. Let me show you on the Kindle. So we've got similar setups here. You got three line spacing, three margin settings. We both got six f different font choices on each of these and uh, various font sizes. You can go really huge. It just depends on the book. Some books don't go. Uh, the fonts depend on the book. Some books will have smaller fonts than other books. It just depends. Uh, right here, they're both very comparable far as the small and large and the mid-range fonts go so I mean that's not really going to be a deciding factor. The Kindle you could use to add your own with the original Paperwhite fonts but they removed that functionality on this one so you don't have that ability and you've never had that ability on the Nook. You can choose to show publishers uh, defaults on the Nook. A um, couple of other things, let me turn this light off again just so you guys can kind of get an idea of the front lights in action. Uh, let me go ahead and show you. So basically they have all the same features as far as table of contents and um, you know, adding notes, uh, sharing that kind of thing. So, so both devices, of course, have the notes and highlights. You can just hold down on a, a selection. The Nook, you can move the arrows right there. Uh, so you can add notes and highlights. One main advantage with the Kindle is that your notes and highlights are synced across devices. You can actually go online and get your just to view a list of your notes and highlights, where you don't get any kind of syncing options with the Nook. It's just basically it's added to the device and then you can see them on the device and that's it. So the Kindle definitely has more options as far as sharing goes. Some other options that the Kindle has, it has uh, translation, uh, Wikipedia, uh, you can search online with the Kindle. Um, another thing is if we uh, just like tap on a, a word or something, you'll get the um, x-ray listing and you'll get the option to go to Wikipedia. So if the book has x-ray, it'll give you an x-ray if there's like names. Uh, it's usually for like names and sometimes places in a book, but uh, so those are definitely some advantages for the Kindle. Uh, the Kindle also has like this estimated reading time down here. You can tap on it to see how much longer you got in the book and in the chapter. Uh, so the Kindle also has some other features like uh, landscape mode. Um, you can switch it over to landscape. So the Nook has never had landscape mode for whatever reason. BNN just doesn't want to add that option to the readers. Um, so like I'm saying, the Kindle it just has a lot more features for it. And then the Nook, but the main advantage with the Nook, of course, is it supports EPUB. 
Um, one of the advantages that the, the Nook used to have over the Kindle was the page buttons, but Barnes & Noble removed those on this model. They also removed the micro SD card slot, so these two devices are very comparable as far as, uh, like, just, I mean, they got the same sort of size screen, the same sort of, uh, like, build. I mean, it's just like being in kind of copied Amazon more on this model by removing the uh, features that made it unique. So now it's like even more like the Kindle than before, except for without all the features. So it's kind of hard to see what direction BNN is going here because the Kindle definitely has a whole lot more features going for it than the Nook. Uh, that's just sort of one thing. I mean, here we can pop up this chapter skipper thing right here. We can jump chapters. You can also fast page scan here. If you just hold this down, it scans through the pages. So the Kindle definitely has some more features. It just sort of depends on what you need from an e-reader. Uh, the Nook, I mean, it's got a really nice screen and the front light's really even compared to older Nooks. So, uh, I mean, as far as the features go, it just... Uh, I mean, like I said, it supports EPUB, so that's the main advantage over the Kindle. You can convert EPUBs to Mobi, and they display fine on the Kindle. Uh, as far as memory, the Kindle has half as much memory as the Nook. Uh, the Nook comes with 4 gigs, the Kindle with 2 gigs. Uh, it's about 1.25 usable on the Kindle and about 2.5 usable on the Nook, except BNN makes it so 2 gigabytes of that has to be used for BNN content, so that only leaves you half a gigabyte of uh, space for side-loaded content, whereas the Kindle, you could, use, you could load all your content onto the... Uh, memory if you want there's no partition there so, so this is what I was saying with x-ray you pop on you uh, highlight a name and it'll tell you more about the character you can open the x-ray features one of the uh, things that the Kindle has going for it that the Nook does not just sort of uh, it helps with books that have a lot of characters and you can't really remember what some of them are uh, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this review right here check out the ebookreader.com I'll have a written review along with this video to uh, list some of the more um, differences and similarities between these two devices so uh, check out the ebookreader.com and thank you for watching goodbye